Hi, how's it going people? This is quite a fun experiment. I get to show you some Dungeons of Betrayal concept work. Uh, I've got permission from Dark Elite Studio to show uh, some of the concepts up, so here it goes. Anyone who's played the demo so far has seen the magical knight. Uh, we could say... <laughs> Title name is a tad bit weird for this character. It was a title in progress, uh, but basically she's an evil, evil knight uh, from the other side. Uh, I can't really say too much about her backstory and such, but it's kind of a fun uh, concept I had to work on. And instantly when I started uh, seeing her character, I'm like, okay, well, let's see if uh, I could try to go with a medieval jury from Street Fighter 4. If you guys played Super Street Fighter 4, the Korean Taekwondo artist, the evil martial artist. Uh, very fascinating character in that sense, so I kind of wanted to get that same vibe. And I really wanted to give her like this impress stance, so mixing a bit of Queen Iseria from Valkyrie Profile with the facial traits of jury, you know, just getting that evil, evil uh, look or evil smile like um, in not embellished evil but just reveling in her evilness in a sense uh, I can't really tell you why because I'd be spoiling a couple of things but she's just completely enjoying being evil uh, in that state so now this was made before the convention so I was working on a very tight deadline uh, so I kind of went up with, at the beginning you saw me doing the really large shapes, now I'm trying to break down every pieces of body parts just to get them rightfully placed uh, in perspective. Uh, and then uh, I'll go a tad bit deeper into trying to get every, let's say, uh, eye position, let's say shoulder positions and all that. And the tricky part, seeing that I was on the deadline, was I started the character, the full character, just to get the pose, but the main objective was the bust, like having a bust of the character. So uh, my time was very limited, and of course I kept up the sketch, you know, the, the initial placement of the full body, but then I start focusing a bit more, or well, way more, the focus remains on just having a bust of this character instead of having a full body. Uh, so. It was kind of interesting because at that time, when it came to that deadline, um, it kind of got me into a mode where I just didn't want to talk to anyone on Skype. I didn't want to check anything. I didn't even want to have, um, let's say, doc documentaries or tutorials up open to listen to. I just wanted to keep alone. So even my phone was set on silent and I just went nuts uh, when it came to this drawing. And it was kind of fun because even now, you see, I instead of doing the flying hair uh, that I wanted to do at first, I'm like, okay, wait, deadline's coming up, I'm going to have to keep it simple. But I kept the other layer, so if I want to have, uh, if I want to put a second state to this character, uh, I can't really tell you what a second state would be, but I can go back to that hair design and just have it fly all around. Uh, the reason why I changed it, again, deadline, and once I start inking, inking flying hair is bloody difficult. <laughs> um, you, Especially if you want to keep the line weight, and that's the most um, crucial part of inking, which I'm slowly learning by doing and doing and doing and doing and doing some more. You know, that and uh, get, gathering a couple of examples from uh, comics that I like, yet uh, inking on its own, it's... At this point, it became trial and error. Just try, does it feel right? Okay, continue. It doesn't feel right, try something else. Doesn't it work? And even then, uh, there's a couple of things I want to change, especially when it comes to that eye, because you know, you know, I wanted one eye to be lower than the, uh, than the other one because the eyebrows stomping down, yet maybe exaggerated. Yeah, I definitely feel exaggerated a bit more, so. Thank God I have the file, I can always modify that, even if it's in color, uh, when it comes to digital, it's infinite retries, which is a very fun aspect of it all. You can try, 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 and uh, get your hand to try various different strokes, um, you know, brush strokes, 
to get what you want, you know, or to get uh, the result you want and learn, okay, well, if I did it this way, this is the result I'm getting. If I did it that way, that's the result I'm getting. So you're going to keep registering all those attempts. Um, and some people might be like, oh yeah, using undo, what's wrong with you? And it's like, well, you do, you do what you need to do to reach a deadline. That's first. If, um, like uh, Vilpu says, man, it's all about, those are all tools. Uh, at the end of the line, you want to win the fight. <laughs> you want to win the battle and the battle being the picture. So using undo to retake your lines when it comes to inking, bloody hell, just fucking do it. You wouldn't get that chance if you did it on paper. And I can tell you from experience, like there's years before, uh, I used to do it on paper when I was big into inking, but then I wasn't too big on inking because when it comes to cartoony lines and inking that it takes a large amount of practice and the more i do these kind of busts uh, the more i realize okay well i can't have this mentality of i have to make it work on the single go um with the digital <laughs> tool you can see i'm already tired but with the digital tool i can try retake and at least give myself the opportunity to get the right lines so that my brain can register okay using a certain way i can get or mo moving my hand a certain way and putting the camera you know turning the camera a certain way i can get this line how does it feel to get this line or how does it feel when i do this line and now i can try to reproduce it so that's why it's like hmm I hated that old mentality I had due to, uh, you know, college and blah, 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 all that good stuff. But now it's like, okay, well, just get the fight done, get the result, learn, get hungry, <laughs> and then go for another fight, you know? Um, same stuff I tell the people when they watch me play Street Fighter online. It's like, even if I lose, it's you learn, you don't get salty, and you get hungry to try out different strategies. It's just like a fighting game, you know? You try stuff. Okay, that didn't work. Why didn't that work? All right, next time, I'm not going to do that in this specific situation. And um, everything becomes a lot more fun at this point. So... Again, you can see I'm trying to go with a tad bit of line weight, but um, I haven't perfected it at that point. I'm basically a tadpole when it comes to inking, yet I love going into this kind of, going into thin lines for detailed um, little elements, you know, trying to add some volumes by adding little, adding line weight, but also adding little details like that to her shoulder pads, along with the uh, dragon tubes. And the difficult part is, again, I'm solely working on a bus, so I have to tell myself, okay, well, there's a cape here. Maybe I should have the cape hide most things, including her arm. And when I'm going to go back and do the full work, uh, like the full body, things could change. I'm going to update the artwork. Everything can be changed at this stage. So uh, it's all on me and uh, the design team just to... You know well the team in general just to conglomerate and see okay well are we gonna have this full image appear in the game can we go off with this what else do we want to add i obviously want to add more stuff but again it's their budget and it's our time our collective time so um you can't always go crazy with details and such and even here you saw i did a general selection of the figure and then splashed paint this helps me save a lot of time because I can just uh, clip every other layer above and then start painting. Uh, like sometimes even using ma magic brush, expanding a bit and then going back in there and just coloring the little strands, you know, that are remaining because magic brush doesn't c catch everything and magic brush at times can be very inaccurate. But uh, this is Manga Studio, so the magic brush is very very good you just need to go back in there and uh, do your modifications uh, never rely entirely on a magic brush because it's there to mess you over at times um, but it really like the whole clipping thing really helps when it comes to getting quick results uh, it's for getting quick results with your flats um, and at that time I didn't do the transition 
of starting values first and then going into flats. Uh, I was in that full rush of a deadline, but usually you would want to get your values slash volumes and grayscale first and then boom, add in the flats. But another thing that could be done, and I think I do it in this one, where I just take out everything and uh, basically do my, my volumes there. Uh, yeah, like I'm starting to do the volumes there after the flats. It's not a big deal. Anything can kind of go, uh, yet one thing that I'm doing more often when it comes to sketching is being a bit more pronounced with my volume so that I can give myself better hints when I start doing these, you know, and that could either be with cross hatching, that could either be with thicker line strokes on certain volumes just to tell myself, okay, this feels this way, uh, let's try and add more volume there. But again, when it came to this deadline, I kept it to a very simple um, single layer shading. I don't think I went to the second, like adding a second cell, and it's something I'm gonna do in the revision of this sketch. And again, you can see me just going even further than the lines uh, when it comes to putting the putting these gray areas, these shading areas. It's mostly because I'm gonna clip that layer after, and it's going to clip to the original you know seeing it's on top of every other clip layer it's going to clip to the base layer so it doesn't matter if i go outside i can just loosely paint and try stuff out and that's basically what happened there uh, in general when it came to trying to figure out the volumes of the armor i just tried stuff out and try to feel it out uh, of course there are references that could be acquired to a certain degree because I don't think we had dragon armors anywhere anytime in our time but there are other uh, let's say things that could be somewhat reproduced such as you know people doing their own in real for cosplay uh, where you could try to get a tad bit of similar uh, semblant lining from there so like not being afraid of references is a very very uh, useful thing <laughs> or useful tool to get because even then now that I look back at it I could have had uh, again deadline but I could have had maybe a tad bit more hints for how to make a shinier top of armor or a shinier uh, crown and there you go like right there everything's clipped everything that went outside didn't matter so you know, I could have had a, a tad bit more reference for some of these things. Um, and I'm definitely going to make use of the, these reference once I found them, or once I find them, for the Passover of these kind of work. So, we're coming to a close. You can see more of these kind of works on the games, um, on the Dark Elite Games, I should say, website. And hey, check out the demo of Dungeons of Betrayal. This is going to be quite epic. Uh, follow the newsletter as well. There's going to be a lot more news about the project of the game. Get ready, this game is going to kick your ass. I believe me, you're going to be grinding, but this game is going to kick your ass. All right. And uh, thanks again for following. There is going to be some more stuff coming up, including uh, not something, something similar to the intermission, if you remember, but pushing it further. I'm actually jumping into a different kind of new series, so stick by, enjoy, see you soon, and please check out the DarkEliteGames.com website for Dungeons of Betrayal. Later, people. Like and subscribe. <laughs>